I'm so excited this morning that we are able to once again participate in an online experience. My hope and prayer is that we will be able to gather as a church again real soon. And as we are approaching June here in New Hampshire, we're going to discover some new ways that we're going to gather. As we begin to move, as this venture begins to go to its next phase, as we are finding ourselves possibly at a close to the, 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 the certain chapter that we're in right now and starting a new chapter or coming to the finish line of our experience in the current and starting at, at a new starting place with a new finish line, we've got to figure out all new ways. We have all new opportunity, all new um, things that we've got to consider, things that we've got to connect with and think about as we proceed forward as a church. What are gatherings going to look like? What are being back in the building? What is that going to look like? I would ask that we begin to pray diligently that God would give us wisdom and discernment as we move forward, as we move forward to, to, to create um, opportunity for ministry, to create opportunity to sing again, to create opportunity to be face-to-face -face in healthy and safe ways again. I can't wait to see you guys. I can't wait to be with you. And God is creating opportunities through things that are already unfolding for us to be able to gather. You guys, I am so very thankful for your gifts and your giving. This church has been able to be uh, 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 just a, a conduit of ministry and work to people everywhere. The people have, have responded with faithfulness. Guys, continue to get on our online giving portal. Continue to send money in in whatever means possible. God has blessed you to be a blessing. God has continued to bless this church and create opportunity for this church to be a blessing to those that it comes in contact with. We have definitely been the church through this whole quarantine experience. So please, please continue with the benevolence as God manifests his goodness through it. This morning, we're starting a new series called Bouncing Back. You know, we have setbacks in life. We have setbacks in life. We fall down, but do we get up? We, we, we have setbacks. Do we bounce back, though? I heard a friend say it this way. Sometimes life's greatest setbacks are God's greatest setups. You know, like this is our opportunity to watch in difficult circumstances and situations that God can do marvelous things. This morning, our sermon is specifically about, specifically about the strength to stand back up again and get going. To stand back up and get going. I feel like this is so timely in the situation that we're in right now. I hope that you guys are encouraged by the word today. Pray, believe, have hope, have confidence as we move forward as a church, as you move forward as a family, as you move forward individually. Okay, there we go. Um, again, as I was just sharing a minute ago, just so thankful and appreciative that you guys are joining us today. Um, you know, I, just in way of just kind of expanding on um, that quick kind of intermi intermission video is that there are just some new things that are going to be happening in the next couple of weeks as June is approaching. And some of the things, a lot of the things that the governor has put in place here in New Hampshire are going to begin to change like they've changed in other states. And we're going to have opportunity to gather again. I imagine it's going to be coming pretty soon here. And so we've got decisions to make. We've got things that we've got to do from this uh, point forward. And it is so critical that we respond appropriately that we respond in a way that is both going to protect those who gather in this building or we who are gathering again, and um, also uh, do things in a way that is going to minister to people. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I, I can't say this enough. I cannot wait until I see all of you uh, face to face again. I'm just so anticipating. But in that seeing each other face to face, I think it's going to be different. So pray with me. Um, as we begin to move into that venture, I um, just want you to know that there are going to be some social media posts. We're going to be sending out letters explaining just some of the things that need to happen in order for us to get together again. It's just going to outline the details of our um, reinitiating church uh, services, if you will, relaunching uh, the ministry experience. 
um, within the building here. So again, pray with me as we move down that road. Um, this morning, I'm starting a new series, Bouncing Back, and I'm going to be talking to you over the next several weeks about um, the fall down that some of us take and the ability to get back up again. The ability to get back on the road again. The ability to get back and stand strong on your feet and be stable. Uh, many of us have taken falls before, and those falls have been intense. Many of us have taken falls before, and those falls have been difficult to overcome. Those falls have been difficult to stand back up again. You know, you know that um, in the beginning stages of learning to ride your bike, I remember teaching each one of my children how to ride their bike and some of them picked it up really fast some of them it took a little while longer to pick up um, but within that um, just learning and discovering how to ride on two wheels there were a lot of spills there was a there was um, bloodshed if you will there were scrapes and bruises there was crying there was um, anger anger you know there was there was frustration on the parents fault and the children's fault and and so like you know, we have experienced fall down. We've experienced fall down. You know, I often say to my wife who looks perplexed when my son decides he's going to do something exciting that he is just like me. Um, it is a wonder that I've made it through all of my teen year, or all of my, my uh, young years up until I can't remember, like 20 or something, 20 something. Um, I chipped a bone in my uh my elbow, which was a pretty cool experience anyway, because I was doing ministry and in this ministry, we were doing this like drama, uh, human video kind of thing. And, and in this drama to show the dramatic uh, experience of what can happen with God, I was breaking bricks. I know you guys, some of you guys are surprised. Some of you are not because you just know how strong I am anyway. So I was breaking down these bricks and I chipped the bone in my um, elbow and it, you know, still kind of makes noticeable, um, you know, presence sometimes. And then there was that other time that I fell in the bathtub um, and like messed up one of my wrists. Anyway, so uh, getting back to what I was saying just a minute ago, um, I was accident prone because I was trying to do new and exciting things that um, just were uh, wonderful as, as a young person. And it caused me many, 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 many times to fall down too many times. Too many times I would go on to embarrass myself. But anyway, all of us have been there. All of us have been there in a physical experience, an emotional experience and a spiritual experience where we have come up to a moment in our life and it has caused us to fall. It has caused us to hit the ground and we wonder, can we can we bounce back? Can we bounce back? Is there a rebound here? Is there an opportunity for us to have faith, um, hope, and love that, that can help us boldly face any crisis that comes our way? You see, God cares deeply about all of us. He cares so deeply about all of us, and he wants to provide for us the power to bounce back, to bounce back. In 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10, in the Phillips version, it says this, God who first ordered light to shine in darkness has flooded our hearts with this, with his light. We now can enlighten men only because we can give them knowledge of the glory of God as we see it in the face of Jesus Christ, this priceless treasure we hold, so to speak, in a common earthware, earthenware jar to show that the splendid power of it belongs to God and not to us. We, have, we are handicapped on all sides, but we are never frustrated. We are puzzled, but never in despair. We are persecuted, but we never have to stand it alone. We may be knocked down, but we are never knocked out. Every day we experience something of the death of the Lord Jesus so that we may also know the power, the life of Jesus. The power of the life of Jesus. Let me take a minute to pray. Jesus, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you for the word. I pray that it would begin to saturate our hearts. God, as we um, embark on this specific message, I pray that lives would be changed. Lord, I pray that though we are physically in different places, we know that you belong, you are in all places. 
You are everywhere. There is no doubt in my mind that you are just as existent right here in this church as you are existent in whatever place we have found ourselves looking at this screen. And I pray, God, right now that you would encourage, that you would bless, that you would motivate us to dig deep and begin to discover what happens when we experience crisis and what happens when we begin to trust you in those moments of crisis. You are an amazing God. Jesus, speak to our hearts today. Amen. This morning's message title is The Strength to Get Up or to get going again, the strength to get going again. In these setbacks, we lack strength. In these setbacks, we face difficulty. In these setbacks, we experience the challenge to get going again. You know, my, my, uh, one of my daughters was talking about, you know, working out and strength conditioning and all these different things. And, and in the process of running, in the process of moving forward, sometimes you're in this forward momentum experience and then something stops it. You ever notice that sometimes when people are waiting for vehicles to pass by and they're um, standing there at the edge of a curb or something, they keep moving their legs because they know that if they stop moving their legs, they will begin to immediately fatigue and perhaps lack the, the, you know, the, the ability to just get going again. Or it's going to take some energy and effort and extra work exerted to get back up to the speed they were um, initially working up to that point. And sometimes we've got this for, forward momentum happening and we're going and we're going places. We're going places, but all of a sudden we find this moment where maybe we're at a crossroads or we get across a road and something is interfering and we begin to slow down. Perhaps we stop and we say, okay, my strength is gone. I don't know if I have the ability to go again. I don't know if I have the ability to stand up strong and begin to move again. And Paul, who's speaking in 2 Corinthians 4, he understands this process. He understands this difficulty. He understands that these things are happening within him. He understands that we are earthen vessels, if you will. We are clay jars, as other translations define it. Meaning that we are frail, easily broken, but there is something marvelous that exists within us. A brilliant, bright light that is the light of Jesus Christ himself. And so if you look at Paul's story, you can begin to see some of the trials that he faced. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to, through uh, 28 speak about some of those things. He was put in prison over and over again. He was flogged and encountered uh, a number of times. He faced death over and over and over again. He'd received 39 lashes from uh, Jewish people five times, beaten with rods three times, and stoned even. He was shipwrecked three times and spent a day and night in the sea. He was under continual danger from rivers and robbers, his own countrymen, as well as the Gentiles. He was in danger in the city, in the country, at sea, in interactions with false brothers, and his ministry, he was weary and in pain often, without sleep, often hungry and thirsty, cold and at times naked. And he was continually concerned about his church. If we read this text that I was just reading a few minutes ago, we begin to discover immediately that there is this moment where he begins to define these experiences that he's having. And he's saying boldly, he's saying boldly. That he is strong because of the work that God is doing in his life. Because of the work that God is doing in his life. And he talks about this glorious treasure. Yet we possess, and this is in the Passion Translation, yet we possess this, the, the brilliant light of God's glory. Jesus Christ. And carry uh, him as treasure in our being. The outward vessels is not... As important as the glorious treasure within, as the glorious treasure within us. And though we experience every kind of pressure, though we experience every kind of pressure, again, in the Passion Translation, as I just read ago, uh, a minute ago, though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. 
And at times we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We are knocked down, but not out, but not out. And church, we are all in a crisis. We're on a crisis right now, or we're all in a crisis as at a other moment in our life. We're all at crisis because uh, COVID-19 is a crisis. We are in our homes in crisis. We are experiencing family and new dynamic in crisis. Some of us, we had just stepped out of a crisis into this crisis. Some of us, this crisis has only added to the crisis that we were already in the midst of. Some of us have gone through these crises. And we have experienced moments where we have just been pressed on, where we felt crushed, where we felt overwhelmed, where we have been knocked down. You see, here's the truth. We will get hit. We will go down, but we can get up again. You see, we will get hit. We will go down. We will get hit. We will go down, but we can get up again. Now, we will get hit physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You guys have experienced this. Physically, you will get hit. Physically, you will get hit with sickness. Some of us, maybe even some of those who are watching right now, the physical getting hit is, in fact, the virus that I'm speaking about this morning, the virus that is infecting and affecting the world. Some of you have been hit by that. Some of you have been physically hit by other things. You've gone into doctor's offices. You've been tested for different things. You find out that you have an autoimmune disease. You find out that there are other things that are going on within your body that is beginning to break down your body. And you have to make decisions to begin to change that. You've been emotionally hit, devastated by relationships and betrayal, devastated by broken marriages, devastated by your confidence and trust in people that you thought you could um, have in your life. Spiritually, you've been hit. You've had moments in your life that have caused you to question everything that you believe about God and every truth that you've heard about Jesus. And in those moments that you've been hit, you've gone down. You've been rushing and moving and pressing all the way and going forward, and you got hit by something, and it knocks you down to the ground. You're physically fatigued and overwhelmed, and it puts you on the floor. You are emotionally fatigued and overwhelmed, and emotionally it has put you on the floor. You have spiritually exhausted your life after you've pursued God and pursued his work, and you've come up what feels to be empty, and it's put you on the ground. But we've got to get up. I know, you know, like culturally speaking, and we've heard it in our families, like you just got to get over it. You got to you got to stand tall anyway, you know, um, pull up your bootstraps or or, you know, just like just power through it. And some of us, we've got busted areas of our life and we're trying to navigate these situations. Sometimes people have said, you know, um, I don't need religion because it's just a crutch. You're right. It's a crutch for me. Sometimes it's been a crutch. Sometimes it's been a wheelchair. Sometimes it's been the Lord himself, as we've heard in poem, um, carrying me through whatever turmoil and trauma that I'm in the midst of. You see, you know, we can get up again, not by our own physical strength necessarily. I mean, physically we can get up again. Sometimes emotionally we can work through it and spiritually we can begin to address these things. But I tell you right now, the lasting um, you know, power of that getting up again or the fact that it will have its intended and needed change in your life is dependent on how you get up again and who you lean into and who gives you the strength to get up again. When we face a major crisis in our life, we've often said it this way. My life will never be the same again. My life will never be the same again. Yes, that is true. Crisis will never leave you. It will never leave you where it found you. Crisis will never leave you where it found you. It will never leave you where it found you. Crisis in our language comes from the Greek word uh, krisis and literally means in some translations to make a decision, to make a decision. Now, I want you to follow along with me as I consider this, okay? Every crisis is an opportunity. If you aren't left where you were, if, if a crisis will never leave you where it found you, where is it going to go? 
Where is it headed? What direction is it leading you in? Because on the other side of crisis, you are a different person. You are a different person physically, spiritually, emotionally. You are a different and entirely different being. That crisis added something to your life. That crisis did something to you. That crisis either made you stronger and more stable in the Lord or it created a greater weakness. And oftentimes when we face crisis of any kind, it exposes the very areas of our life that are ill. It exposes the very areas of our life that need to be addressed. I don't like to face crisis. I don't think anybody likes to face crisis. We don't like to go into moments where trauma is occurring. Moments where struggles happen. Moments where difficulties affect our life. But we got to know. Church, you've got to know. People listening, you've got to know that crisis, crisis, every crisis is an opportunity. Every crisis you face is an opportunity. It's a chance. It's a moment to experience God in a more powerful and significant way. It's an opportunity to experience Christ in ways that you have never experienced them before. And so if I were to break down just like three things, and and these are not all inclusive. These are just three things that came to me as I was praying about this message and how to get the strength, the strength to get going again. God just brought to me three things, okay? In every crisis, there is an opportunity to experience a resurrected faith in the God who can. Again, looking back at 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10, we hear God who first ordered light to shine in darkness has flooded our hearts with his light. What is that light? What is that light? The light of God has ordered. The light of God has begun to shine. The light of God has begun to shine in the darkness. It was first ordered to light and shine in the darkness. If you go back to the beginning, if you go back to creation, you will see that light exploded on the scene and illuminated the entire world as God began his work of creation. You talk about power. You talk about power. You talk about the significance of that. You talk about how light, how the sun is necessary, not just necessary. It is absolutely, you know, it it is needed, period, for plant life to grow, uh, for for us to physically um, find strength. If we lack light, if there is a dark out or a blackout of any kind where the sun is suddenly gone, death and decay will immediately enter our existence. The beginning, God said, let there be light. And we have to realize that there can be in these moments of crisis a resurrected faith in the God who can. That is the light that brought life into the world, into beings, into creation, and it is the light that brings life to us in our hearts. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. The new is here. We have an opportunity for a resurrected faith in the God who can. What are you asking God to do? What what do you need of God? In this moment of crisis, we need to begin to believe again in the God who can. The God who can do wonders. The God who can change situations. The God who can meet us in the place of our dilemma and shock us with his wonder and his work. That brilliant light that exists within us, that has flooded our heart, the light that we can bring to other people, the light that exists within this this broken and frail and fragile vessel that we call our body. How has his light illuminated you? And how is God telling you right now through his son, Jesus Christ, and his spirit saying, hey, you listen up for just a minute. Listen up for just a minute. I want you to know that in this crisis, you can have a resurrected hope in what God can do. God's telling you, look at, look at me. The Lord's telling you to look at him. Jesus is telling you to look at him and look at the things that he has done. Look at the work that he has done in your life thus far. Look at the work that he's done in other people's lives. To not be jealous but expectant. 
Sometimes we sit back and we're just like, oh, well, that's not fair. That's not cool. You know, these wonderful things happen to them, but what about me? We need to look at those things and allow those things to impress upon us hope as we look at what they've been through and what they've experienced and what God has done. We can look at our life and say, wow, I could be expectant of what God is going to do in my in my life, in my heart. You see, there's also an opportunity for a reassurance of love from the God who cares. In 2 Corinthians, going back there to 4, um, in those verses 4, 6 through 10, it says this. It says, we are handicapped on all sides, but never frustrated. We are puzzled, but never in, dis- never in despair. We are pu- persecuted, but we never have to stand alone. We are knocked down, but never knocked out. Every day we experience something of the death of the Lord Jesus so that we may also know the power, so that we may also know the power, catch that, so that we may also know the power of the life of Jesus. What am I saying? At every single defeat, he is there to lift us to life. At every single defeat, every single defeat that you face, whether that's a defeat that you experienced because you defeated yourself or you made a poor choice or that defeat is something that came upon you from the circumstances of the world, the circumstances of relationships, the the circumstances of physical diagnosis, the circumstances of a spiritual situation changing. Every single time you face defeat. He is there to lift you up. Every single time you face defeat, he is there to lift you up. We don't despair. We don't despair. We are never, we we never stand alone. We're never knocked out. We know he has power. We know his power. We know his power in the life of Jesus. We know it. We experience it. We encounter it. You need to recognize that this morning in this crisis that the Lord is saying to you, I want to reassure you, my child, of my love and the fact that I care, that I'm with you, that I've responded to your need, that I am with you throughout all of this. So many of us were wondering, like, how can I bounce back from this? It might, you know, it could be anything. In this moment, as we're thinking about this in a ministry realm, as, as, as this virus has affected everything from the economy to church gatherings to restaurants um, being able to open from all these different things, all this chaos that has um, just entered our life. And we're all scared. We're all nervous. Like, how are we going to reintegrate? How are we going to, how are we going to, to um, get back to life as normal? Again, what I said earlier, every crisis that we experience, it never leaves you the same. It never leaves you the same, nor should it. Does it empower you or does it keep you broken? Does, does, it, does it empower you or does it rob you of the power that can exist within you through the, the Holy Spirit? Through the Holy Spirit. And God's like, look, I want you to know I care. I want you to know I care in that text. Don't despair. Don't despair. You're not alone. I love that. You're never going to stand alone. You're never going to be in an experience where you're all by yourself because he cares for you. He wants you to know that in love, he cares for your every need. In love, he cares for your every emotion. In love, he cares for your every uh, devastated feeling. And when you get knocked down, you're not knocked out. It's not over. It's not done. Through the power of Christ, you can stand back up again and be better for it because you got knocked down in the first place. And number three, there is a reinvigorated hope for what God will do. There is a reinvigorated hope for what God will do. How many of you guys need a reinvigorated hope? So many of us, including myself, have struggled with looking at this situation from a a cynical lens. Where we're just like, okay, we're going to get back to church, but it's going to be different. We're going to get back to church, but it's not going to be the same. We're going to get back to ministry, but it's going to be flawed in some way because we're not doing it the same way we used to do it. 
You know, there's something about the work God can do when everything has been brought to a standstill. And everything we thought we were doing right, every method we thought we were supposed to do is suddenly, you know, just, just we're, we're stripped of all of that. We were just going on and doing our thing and moving forward and, and making things happen. And then all of a sudden, we hit this moment and everything is broken. Everything's different. I don't know how I'm going to um, reinvent church. I feared that. Some of you have feared, like, how am I going to reinvent um, my uh, job? How am I going to reinvent a business that I'm going to open again? How am I going to reinvent um, tailoring, uh, you, you, like, like um, going booth to booth to uh, – Bring people food. How am I going to reinvent standing in front, behind a counter and, and, and taking orders? How am I going to reinvent all of these things? How am I going to step out there? You see, the Lord is telling us right now that you can be reinvigorated with hope for what God will do. Again, going back to reference, referencing 2 Corinthians 4, 6 through 10. Again, be reinvigorated. You don't have to be in despair. You don't have to stand alone. You're not knocked out. And we know the power of Christ. I love how that text, you know, just brings it to a close in this moment where he says, Jesus, so that we may also know the power of the life of Jesus. So that we may know. So that we may know. What is that saying right there? So that we may know. What does that mean? So that... It's like it's defining all of these things. It's defining all of these struggles. It's defining all of these moments where we're crushed. We feel perhaps abandoned. We feel knocked down. All these different moments. And then it says so. All of these different things coming together, converging in one moment where you feel like you have nothing left. All of these things so that you may know. So that you may also know the power of the life of Jesus. Every day we experience something of the death of the Lord Jesus so that we may know. So that we may know. Don't be afraid, church. Have hope, church. Have hope, church. The situation may appear grim, but he is God. He is God. You see, the struggle is real. But so is Jesus. I've heard that said sometime. The struggle is real, but so is Jesus. The struggle is, you know, just affecting us. The struggle is right in front of us. The struggle is real, but so is Jesus. How are you going to bounce back? Bouncing back? How are you going to do it? How are you going to accomplish it? I tell you right now, the only way... The only way that you are ever going to be able to bounce back is because of Christ. If I were to say to you right now, why is it that some people bounce back and others don't? You may be able to bounce back in some way or another in the sense of, of you know, uh, non-spiritual understanding. Like some people may bounce back in their businesses. Some people may be able to bounce back in their relationships. Some people may be able to bounce back in their finances. But how do you truly, deeply, in every single way bounce back? Jesus, he is the answer. He will always be the answer. He will never not be the answer. You know how I know that? Because he has always been the answer. From, from the moment, from the moment where I finally said, where I finally surrendered, where, where, you know, I had been to church for years and I wander away. You know, I knew that I was called to ministry, but I was going to do my own thing. I was going to chase other things and over and over and over again, I would just like, I got to bounce back. I got to get through this. I got to get over this. I got to get out of this. I got to get back up again. And Jesus is like, hey, you want to know how you do that? Me. Jesus is like, hey, come here. Come here, Seth. Come, come to me. Come to me and experience life. You will never truly, completely, in every way in life experience full life if you've not experienced Christ 